Okay, are you getting full yet? There's only a few of these structures left to go, but we have to get a couple more into you. We have to talk about uh, esters and carboxylic acids, and I believe that will do it. We used to do ethers and ketones, but I believe they are gone now, so almost there. Hang tough. The new thing is you can have a chain of carbons and at the end of it sometimes you get a structure that looks like this. You'll have a carbon which, sorry I want to write this a little nicer so you can actually see what I'm doing. You'll get a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then single bonded to another oxygen and then because oxygens can form two bonds there'll be another bond here that you can put something on the end of. A carbon like this with the two oxygens is called a carboxyl group. This is short for carbon and oxygen group. And when you have something like this, it changes the name of the chain to O8 so that if you just had four carbons we would call this butane but if you have four carbons and it ends with COO, we would call it butanoate or butanoate. And if there's a hydrogen on the end of this, then it is an acid. This hydrogen comes off relatively easily, and instead of butanoate, we, call, we would call this butanoic acid. The butanoate part is going to be covered in the next section, but I want you to see it now because when I, when you see one of these, I would prefer that you not see the COOH as one big solid brick. What you should see here, and it'll make the next section easier, is that you've got a carboxyl group and attached to it, there could be any number of things, but in this case there is a hydrogen. When you have a carboxyl group with a hydrogen, that is when you have what we call a carboxylic acid. And carboxylic acids get, name like, get names like this. So they're going to, if you just have one carbon, you'll have methanoic acid. If you have two carbons, it's ethanoic acid. Three is propanoic acid. Four would have been butane, instead it's butanoic acid, and so on like that and they can have branches like anything else and let's try out a few and just get used to how the naming for them works so as always we look for our primary chain first and then we'll worry about what's attached to it in this case our primary chain contains that carbon and two and three there are four carbons in the primary chain for this so oh. I just duplicated my own example, didn't I? I didn't do that on purpose, but it happened. Four carbons means this would be butane. When you see the COO, if all you had was that, forget about the hydrogen, you would call this butanoate. Butanoate. And when you see there's a hydrogen connected to that, which could come off, then we call this butanoic acid. The carbon that has the carboxyl, that is in the carboxyl group, is considered carbon number one. So if you're doing any kind of branching, you're going to be doing one, two, three, four to number it. Even though we don't say this is one butanoic acid or butan one oic acid or anything like that, nevertheless, as soon as you have an acid like this, that locks in your numbering for you. This has to be number one and we proceed from there. So butanoic acid. Here our primary has two carbons, so this is based on ethane, and we call it ethanoic acid. There's an informal name for this, acetic acid, which is also used, but that isn't the standard name and it doesn't follow the rules, so ethanoic acid is preferred because it contains ethane. That's how we're supposed to be thinking. Here we have a carbon, and it's one hydrogen, and that's it. The entire primary chain is that one carbon, so this would be a methane derivative. Methanoic acid. This one's also known as formic acid, but that's an old name and not the one that we should be using here. 
here, well, we've got uh, this ring of carbons, and then we have OOH, so apparently this works too. Our primary in this case is a benzene. If you're thinking like benzenoic acid, that's not a bad guess, but they cut it down even further than that, and they call this benzoic acid. And for this last one, one, two, three, four, there are five carbons in the primary chain of this thing, which means it's based on pentane. Here's the OOH, so pentanoic acid. But wait, there's more. We have a methyl group here, so this is methyl pentanoic acid. And where is that methyl group? This has to be carbon number one, because the carboxyl group's on it. So this is number two, and this is number three. And so here we have three methyl pentanoic acid. And one more. Let's see. So here's our carboxyl group. We have the double bonded O and then an OH. So there's a carbon here, and then two and three. Uh, I don't want to go 4, 5, because if I do, I'd have a branch off a branch over here. There's a way to handle this. There's a special name for that, but let's avoid that and say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If we do it that way, then all of our branches are connected to the primary, and that's what we want. So 5 carbons on the primary means this is a pentane. If it just had the two O's and it didn't have the H, we'd call it pentanoate. Because it has OOH, we call it pentanoic acid. And what else has it got? Here we have a methyl group, which starts with M. Here we have an ethyl group, which starts with E. E goes first because we're doing alphabetical order, so this would be ethyl pentanoic acid. And that ethyl is on carbon number one, two, three. So three ethyl and then four methyl. Three ethyl, four methyl pentanoic acid. Can we draw some of these? Yeah, we probably can. Let's try it. Hexanoic acid. This piece of the name tells you we started with hexane. So six carbons, two, three, four, five, six. If we put a double O and a single O on it, now we have hexanoate or hexanoate. And to turn it into an acid, well, it's got to have a hydrogen to give up. So there it is, hexanoic acid. And you could run down all this and attach the hydrogens. I trust you can do that part. I'm going to save us several minutes by not showing it here. Three propyl, that can wait. Octanoic acid. Octanoic acid comes from octane, so eight carbons. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. To make it, that's octane. This is octanoate, or octanoate. This is octanoic acid. And now they say, on the third carbon, we put a propyl group. Remember, this has to be the first carbon. Wherever, wherever the carboxyl group is, that's definitely number one. So this is two, and this is three. That's a methyl group. Now it's an ethyl group, and now it's a propyl group. 3,4-diethyl, 2-methyl, all this is branches. That can wait. Heptanoic acid. Heptane is seven carbons. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's heptane. Now it's heptanoate. Now it's heptanoic acid. And now we attach onto it three, four diethyl. So if this is carbon number one, two, carbon number three gets an ethyl group. Carbon number four gets an ethyl group. And then the second carbon here gets a methyl group.
oxalic acid. This one is a bit of a cheat. I kind of object to this because we don't have... This one doesn't follow the rules. But what it is is two back-to-back -back carboxyl groups. If you look up oxalic acid in your data book, it's written huku. And there's no way you could figure this out from the name. I'm, this, this is an old name that has hung around, so I kind of apologize for this one. But I guess we, it's better that we show you than just let you get ambushed later. So what this is, is you have a carboxyl group, C, O, O, H, back to back with another carboxyl group, each with a hydrogen. So this is a carboxylic acid, this is another carbo carboxylic acid, and they are linked together. That's oxalic acid. Um, when we have like two alcohols, we call it a diol, and we have a way of naming those things. I don't know that there's a system for naming double carboxylic acids like this. It's like we'd want to call this uh, ethyl dioate, ethyl 1,2 dioate or something to show that it's got a carboxyl group on either side of it, but there isn't a naming system that I'm aware of that works that way, so instead they have this patch name for it, and it's carboxylic acid. So, awkward, doesn't follow the rules, just keep in the back of your mind that if you ever see oxalic, you can look it up and you can figure out from the name here that this is a carboxyl, and this is a carboxyl written backwards, because they're just written back, they're connected back to back. Bit odd. Formic acid. All right, this is another archaic name, and this is better known as methanoic acid. Let's do that so we can actually use our rules. Methanoic acid means it's based on methane, a single carbon. If you attach, if you make that the base of a carboxyl group, now you have methanoate, and give it a hydrogen here, and now you have methanoic acid. And for this one, they do it again. Acetic acid is the alternate name for, this is what we should be asking you about, ethanoic acid. Now, this actually tells us something. This tells us it's based on ethane, so two carbons. If it had a carboxyl group on one end, that would be ethanoate or ethanoate. And then give it a hydrogen, and now it's ethanoic acid. 